Welcome back Hyperspinners, Avar here, and in this fundamental episode of Official Hyperspin Guides, I'll be walking you through the initial setup of our core programs, Hyperspin and Rocket Launcher. Before we begin, at a minimum, please take the time to ensure your video card drivers and your operating system are up to date. If you're unsure, see the description for more details. With that done, we're ready to proceed with installation. The first thing we need to do is decide where we want to put our setup. Hyperspin will work on your C drive, but it's best not to co-locate it with your operating system. This is to avoid loss of all your Hyperspin related work in the event you ever need to format for any reason. Regardless of where you ultimately decide to install it, be sure to place Hyperspin at the root of the drive. This is in order to keep file paths as short as possible, so as to avoid complications down the road. For my setup, I'll be using the J drive. Proceed to your chosen drive and press Ctrl Shift N to create a new folder. Name it Hyperspin with a capital H and a capital S. Log into the Hyperspin website and proceed to the download section. I provided a link directly to the page we need in the description below. Before downloading the latest release, we need to temporarily disable our antivirus. Don't be alarmed, this is strictly because the Hyperspin executable file itself triggers a false positive. I assure you it's perfectly safe and that Hyperspin contains no viruses, malware, or bloatware of any kind. When ready, download both Hyperspin 1.3.3 and 1.4 to the folder we just created. Before re-enabling our antivirus, we're going to add an exception for Hyperspin. I'm using ESET NOD32, but the process will be similar for most antiviruses. Enter your antivirus's settings, locate your exclusion options, and add, at a minimum, an exception for Hyperspin.exe in the folder we're using. Personally, I just add an exception for my entire Hyperspin drive. Extract Hyperspin133.zip. Take a moment to delete install instructions.doc as well as the modules folder. These are both for an older version of Hyperspin and they're no longer relevant. Leaving them just leads to confusion. Next, extract the Hyperspin 1.4 zip directly into the Hyperspin folder. When asked if you want to replace existing files, say yes. When you're done, delete both of the Hyperspin zip files you just extracted. The time has come to install Rocket Launcher, a vital component for our setup and the program that will actually be launching and handling our game files. First, we need to register an account at the Rocket Launcher website. Follow the link I've provided in the description below and complete registration. Once registered, log in and head to the download section for Rocket Launcher files. Download the latest full install of Rocket Launcher, taking a moment to copy the archive password at the bottom of the page. Place the Rocket Launcher zip file on the root of the Hyperspin drive, not in your Hyperspin folder. Extract it using the password we just copied. Make sure your directory looks just like mine. It's very important to keep the Rocket Launcher folder separate from your Hyperspin folder like this so as to avoid complications down the road. Next, head back to Rocket Launcher's downloads and grab the base media pack. Move the Rocket Launcher Media.7zip file you get into the Rocket Launcher folder and extract it like so. When asked if you want to overwrite files, say yes to all. When that's finished, you may delete both Rocket Launcher's and the base media pack zip files. At this point, we'll go into our Rocket Launcher settings folder. Here you'll find global emulators example.ini. Rename this file, removing the example tag. This will enable Rocket Launcher to work with virtually every known emulator, and it's much simpler than adding new emulators manually. Now to make Hyperspin and Rocket Launcher work together. Go into your Hyperspin settings folder and open settings.ini in Notepad++. Under the main section at the top of the file, you'll see a parameter called hyperlaunch path. Change this to reflect the exact location of your newly installed rocketlauncher.exe file. Please note that this is case sensitive. Save and exit. Next, go back to your Hyperspin folder and run HyperHQ. Select Wheel Settings, browse to any wheels you plan on using in your setup, and set Execution to Hyperlaunch. It should be set there by default. In future videos, I'll demonstrate how to add, remove, and rearrange your systems but for now we'll work with the ones included in the Hyperspin package. When you're finished, close HyperHQ and go to your Rocket Launcher, Rocket Launcher UI folder. Run rocketlauncherui.exe. When prompted to update, say yes, then click Check Updates and Apply Updates when able. When asked to overwrite existing files, say yes. This ensures you have the very latest modules or programming for running games through various emulators. Once the update is complete, you may close the update window. You should now be in the Global General Settings tab. Click the lens to the right of the Default Front End Path parameter, browse to your Hyperspin folder, and select Hyperspin.exe. 
With that done, click on the Rocket Launcher UI tab at the top of the window and choose the Front End's Sub tab, then click the plus icon. This is where we tell Rocket Launcher how to find Hyperspin. For name, use Hyperspin as you see here. And once again, click the magnifying lens to set the path to the location of your Hyperspin executable file. For Rocket Launcher UI plugin, you may use either Auto Detect or Hyperspin. And for Rocket Launcher plugin, you may use either Default or Hyperspin. I prefer to choose Hyperspin for both. When you're finished, click the Save icon on the top left of the Add Front End window to save and exit. Finally, click once on the newly created Hyperspin entry and then click on the icons above it, like so in order to set Hyperspin as your default and active front end. As soon as you've done this, the system list in the left pane should populate with all of the systems you'd see in your Hyperspin main menu. The next step is to create a temporary extraction folder for Rocket Launcher to work with when it's playing compressed ROMs, which have the benefit of potentially improving performance and saving hard drive space. This folder will ideally be placed on the root of your C drive, or on any solid state drive. Head to the drive you want to use and press Ctrl, Shift, N to create a new folder. I suggest calling it Rocket Launcher Temp. Then, in Rocket Launcher UI, go to Global, Settings, Main Settings, and in the 7-zip section you'll see a perimeter called Extract Path. Click the magnifying lens and browse to the folder you've just created. The very last thing we're going to do is create some shortcuts that will make our lives easier and save time down the road, especially as we further customize and set up Hyperspin. Head to your Hyperspin folder and pin HyperHQ, Hyperspin, and HyperTheme to your taskbar. Next, head to your Rocket Launcher, Rocket Launcher UI folder, and do the same with Rocket Launcher UI.exe. Congratulations, you've completed the initial installation of Hyperspin and Rocket Launcher. I hope you found this guide helpful. In the next video, I'll introduce you to Hyperspin databases so we can later run our games. In subsequent tutorials, we'll delve further into aesthetic customization and how to work with increasingly complex emulators and systems. Please share this video so as to spread word of Hyperspin, and be sure to like and subscribe to stay up to date with the latest official Hyperspin news and guides. Thank you very much for watching, and have a great day.